Alvin Bailey has returned 72 consecutive punts coming into today's ball game. He just absolutely risks his body every time he goes back. He hasn't really refined the fair catch signal as yet, and he just keeps returning them, and he keeps running them back and giving Tampa Bay good field position, where over the last six games, certainly, John Reeves and company have cashed in the opportunity. Well, 28 of those punt returns have come this year. The rest were in 1983. And when I was a rookie in Pittsburgh, Keith, I returned punts. I think I had about 49 before I really learned what the fair catch was all about. Well, Alvin talks about having faith and trust in the people who block for him. And if you're a punt returner, that's necessary. That's, you, you demand that kind of confidence and, and performance by them because you put yourself in jeopardy each time when they come down and they're close. Averaging just over 19. Williams just over 18, almost 19, so they are a pair of dangerous people deep. And Mazzetti hits it. The game is on at Tampa Stadium. It goes to Ricky Williams out of Florida State. And Williams is across the 25, reaches the 28, where it'll be first down for the Bandits. The Bandit Ball Gang is led by number seven, John Reeves, who had three years at Philadelphia, four at Cincinnati, one at Minnesota, and one at Houston in the NFL. Gary Anderson and Greg Boone are the setbacks with Willie Gillespie. He's a, a little gimpy today. And Eric Trevelyan, the wide people. And the first snap of the ball will come from the hand of Chris Foote. And Willie Gillespie, as a matter of fact, is not out there. Spencer Jackson will start at wide receiver in place of Gillespie. He is a rookie out of Florida and a flyer. And Reeves will put it up on the first snap of the ball game. And he goes complete. Spectacular catch by Gary Anderson, who had moved out into a slot position from his eye back spot. He took a heck of a lick, and he holds on to it in the first down at the New Orleans 45. Well, we knew that Tampa Bay was going to come out and put the ball in the air. John Reeves, number seven. This is his 97th pass without an interception in the last seven ball games. Bruce Miller made him pay for it. And Anderson again swinging to the sidelines, makes the catch out of bounds inside the 41. They put it down on the 40 with Ben Needham knocking him down. Up front for Tampa Bay. This is the way they line up, and uh, we'll have to take a very quick look at it because Tampa Bay is going without a huddle. First down from the New Orleans 40. The breakers show blitz. They hand the ball off to Greg Boone. And Booney out of Duke goes slashing down to about the 31. So Tampa Bay coming out moving the football. Well, Tampa Bay is wasting no time. They're coming out playing what people call a hurry-up offense or a two-minute offense without taking a huddle. They don't want to let, I think at this point, New Orleans get the nickel defense in and put the ball in the air consistently. It's another first down. Reeves gets it away just before he is covered. Pass complete to Eric Trevelyan. Trevelyan's inside. The 15, down to the 12. Another first down. Joe Rustic made the tackle. And they're still going without a huddle, and your point is well taken, Swanee. They don't want New Orleans to get that fifth and maybe even sixth defensive back on the field. The only way that he could do it would be to call a timeout, but he can't do that with Tampa Bay sitting ready to go with the ball. And they give it off to Boone again, and Greg Boone coming outside with it. Goes to the five, down to the four. He picked up about seven yards, and Rustic again makes the tackle with help from Ray Phillips. The New Orleans Breakers are playing a 3-4 off a defensive alignment team. They like to bring in Junior Ayu when they're in obvious passing situation. He leads his team in sacks. He's number 77. But now they can't get him in the ball game to get the pressure on. But now they finally, just now, they've had a chance to get some defensive substitutions into the ball game. The Tampa Bay having the ball on the four-yard line. Actually, it's closer to the three. Ayu is now in. So it's second down. They can get a first down just at the one. Rotsky and Jackson, two wide receivers to the bottom of the picture. And Reeves rolls that way. Throws short on the goal line. Pass is complete. And it's a touchdown to Eric Trubillion. So just like that, boom, 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 they stick at the end zone. John Reeves on the money with all of his passes. A couple That's of good impressive. runs. Very impressive drive. Very impressive in terms of strategy on the part of Steve Spurrier. Not giving New Orleans a chance to get in its nickel defense. Keeping them off guard for a very quick touchdown here in the opening quarter on their first possession. 
Willie Gillespie will hold for Zenon Andrews Ishan. And he skins it through. It wasn't exactly perfect, but he got it in. He had missed four points this season, but this one is good. And so we show 12-17 to play in the first quarter, and the Bandits have jumped on top here in the three-yard touchdown play. It's a three-yard play with John Reeves rolling out, and here in Tampa, they talk about Bandit football. Quick football to put the ball in the air, prolific passing attack, using Gary Anderson on the ground, John Reeves pinpoint passing. Perfect example of what the Tampa Bay Bandits can do and what New Orleans has to stop if they have a chance, if they want a chance to win this ball game. Trevelyan, the man that made the touchdown catch. Two passes to Anderson, two passes to Trevelyan, and two runs by Boone, six plays. It's three yards and a touchdown. He came into the ball game, the second leading receiver in the Eastern Conference, 57 catches and seven touchdowns. Make that now 59 catches and eight touchdowns. And the New Orleans breakers need to put up right now. But another thing that worries Dick Curry and his staff is that Tampa Bay has gone to a 4-3 front. They've managed to get Nordgren out of the position where in a three-man front he was being double teamed a lot. And with the Nordgren and Butler in particular along that defensive front, they have really been playing some tough defensive football. Tony Good, number 31, is the deep man for the New Orleans Breakers. And Good will accept it at the six. That's a good run. He picked his way. He didn't overcommit. Left the blocking form and picked his way up across the 30 out to about the 33. So a good return by Tony Good. And here comes Johnny Walton in company now. Walton opening at quarterback. Had a rough seven games, really. The first five were terrific. Marcus Dupree will start at the I-back or setback position. Mark Shaleen will be the fullback of the blocker. Charlie Smith and Frank Lockett are the wide people. And Dan Ross is the tight end. So Marcus Dupree gets the start today. That's Ross in motion, and Dupree has the ball. That's it up the field. Marcus Dupree goes for the first down. He hits the chalk right about the marker at the 44, and James Harrell, outside linebacker, brought him down. Well, Mark Shalane is 5'10 and 225 pounds, and he and Dan Ross combined for some great blocking on the outside to open it up for Dupree. Dan Ross came out of Cincinnati to play for this team as we take a look at the offensive line. Louis Ballard, Jerry Raymond, Mike McLaughlin, Greg Horton, Dan Hurley, and Dan Ross. It is a first down at the 44 of New Orleans. Tampa Bay leads seven to nothing. If you just joined us, they took the opening kick off and went 72 yards. Set up a screen for Dupree. He's got to outrun number 75, and he can't quite do it. Walter Carter, out of Florida State, a 250-pound tackle, ran him down, but still he picked up five yards on the carry, maybe a little more. The Tampa Bay defensive unit lines up with Butler, Carter, Nordgren, Clark across the front. Three linebackers are Harold Kirchbaum and Alonzo Johnson. And the secondary, Doug Bedoin, is back in there today with Jeff George, Zach Henderson, and Warren Hanna. Ball is just short of midfield now, and it's second down four for New Orleans. In their tenth Michigan last week, they used a lot of screens, a lot of passes thrown in the underneath spots, the short zone. This is Dupree again. Outside he goes. Takes on a tackler at the 45, moves down to the 43. He got a shoulder into Zach Henderson and rode him backwards. Keith, right now we're seeing some obvious differences as we noted early in the broadcast that we thought the New Orleans Breakers would try and keep the ball on the ground a little bit more, and they are doing that, and so far they're doing it su successfully. The difference being that if they can keep the ball on the ground, grind it out, and put points on the board, they don't give the Bandits a chance to possess the football but they scored in only two minutes and 43 seconds keep that in mind for the late goings of the ball game first down at the tampa bay 43 for new orleans smith goes in motion that gives them a double wide top but they go back the other way with marcus dupree and dupree is muscled out of bounds by warren Hanna as he gets to the 41 he picked up two yards warren Hanna did a good job of reading that play keith everything was going to the right or to his left and then the play, the ball was handed off coming back to his side. He didn't go for the fake, held his position, 
and was just outside the blocking uh, the blocking in to knock Dupree out of bounds. Dupree leaves now, and Buford Jordan comes in, rookie out of McNeese State, and he's just as tough, not quite as fast, but he is a slashing sort of a runner, and he runs for very well inside. Second down and eight. Jordan. They're running behind that left side of the line, and this time coming up out of the secondary, the free safety, Zach Henderson makes the tackle just across the 40. So there's a gain of a yard, and they'll be looking now at third and seven. Zach Henderson did a great job. He came out number 65, Jerry Raymond, the left guard for the breakers, was leading on that play. He got underneath them, right into Buford Jordan to make the stop. Now on third and long, you go to the nickel defense, for Tampa Bay. That's Lockett, number 80. Shotgun formation. Jordan's a good pass catcher out of the backfield. Charlie Smith comes in motion. Walton steps up, throws for Ross. Dan Ross has it. He has a first down as he gets to the 31-yard line. So Johnny Walton found one of his favorite targets, Dan Ross. Dan Ross leads this team in receptions. He has 43, but Johnny Walton was facing a blitz, and he takes a little punishment. He gets the ball away. His line holds up just long enough that he goes down to the ground. The line has to give him a little bit more time to protect Johnny Walton. He's taken quite a few strong hits this year. Dupree is back in now. At the I-back position for New Orleans. First down at the Tampa, 31. Dupree running left. Good block from Ross. And Marcus Dupree gets to the 29. That's two tough yards. Somebody's helmet came flying out of the stack. Oh. Ross does a great job on the block. Number 20, Warren Hanna comes up. And he takes on Mark Shaleen to take away the guard, the uh, fullback who was leading this play. Now watch Dan Ross. Great block right here. He's got him stood up. He's moving to the outside. Just can't take him down. Number 58, Alonzo Johnson from... Florida A&M University in on the tackle. I think if Marcus had cut that one back inside, he might have had a little more room. He leaves for the moment. It was Dupree. He lost his helmet. Jordan comes back. And Buford is the long remaining back with three wide. Johnny Walton said they're trying to get five receivers into their patterns now. Here's a little swing out to Jordan, getting one-on-one. -on -one. But Polk arrives in a hurry, and Jordan is dropped on the 30. So they'll be looking at third down now and about nine yards. First hit bomb, one of the first to get into him. Jordan's a tough customer one-on-one. -on -one. He is a tough customer. He's done a great job with his ball club. If you look at the film on New Orleans, and you see how they do like to throw the ball downfield quite a bit, it's surprising to me that the linebackers for Tampa don't take a uh, deeper drop so that the screens would work a little bit better for this ball club. But apparently they're reading it, staying very close so they're able to make the stop on the play. is deflected at the line of scrimmage. You've got a penalty flag thrown across the field. You may have a holding call coming here. Probably be refused and bring up fourth down. Illegal motion on the offense. Two men moving at the same time. Decline. Fourth down. All right, it's fourth down, and that is... Uh, that's long for Mazzetti, however, Tim is coming out there. His longest this year, 44 yards. This will be a 48-yard try for Tim Mazzetti. So the breakers going to the place kicker, trying to get three points out of this possession. Nolan Flynn gets it down. Mazzetti hits it. And he missed it. Long enough, just wide to the left to Tim Mazzetti. So the home crowd likes it at 7.28 to go first quarter. The Bandits will get the ball back, and they lead 7 to nothing. Buford shaved the hair away. He's ready to swim the long distance. <laughs> ball is sitting on the 30. First down for Tampa Bay, John Reeves. Four out of four, 54 yards for the touchdown in the opening possession. 
What New Orleans desperately need here is for the defense to hold them. Reeves to throw it on first down. Goes down the middle with it. The pass was deflected. The pass is incomplete. But you see the all-out effort by Spencer Jackson. He almost came up with a deflected ball. The ball was tipped. He was just dying on him, so he, he had to come back to the ball a little bit. He reacted uh, you know, as best he could while running, running in the opposite direction. Got his hands on it, but the ball just hit the ground. He was hit and bounced away. Here's a guy that I find enormously refreshing in fashion of football, Steve Spurrier. Second down and ten for the Bandits. Three out to Gary Anderson. Set a screen for him. But he runs into trouble and runs out of time as Ray Phillips fought his way through the blockers and made the tackle for the breakers. So they bring up third down and a loss on that play of three. It'll be third and 13. Dick Corey still did not put in a fifth defensive back. Even though the Tampa Bay Bandits threw the ball successfully on their opening drive. Now he does though. Charles Harbison comes in. He's playing a little hurt and he doesn't have all of his speed. But you know, Spurrier's got as many gimmicks as anybody in his playbook. <laughs> you might see one right here. 45% on third down conversions. Reeves in a drop. Good protection. Pass is caught by Trevelyan. Trevelyan eludes two New Orleans tacklers and gets the first down. The catch was all right, but the running was spectacular. He does not waste a lot of time slowing himself down, trying to cut back to the opposite side of the field. He takes this ball in this little delay coming across. Now watch the one step to freeze, number 56, Marcus Merrick. Then he cuts it in, inside, getting upfield, running straight down the field to pick up the first down. Ball is just short of the 43 for Tampa Bay. Oh, if they stick it in the end zone here, look out. Leaves again, goes to Trevelyan. They've got him pinned on the sidelines, and he's out of bounds up around the 46. Ben Needham and Bruce Miller were out there defensively for New Orleans. Trevelyan now has four catches in this ball game, 47 yards. Florida A&M is quite well represented on this Tampa Bay roster. This is Greg Moon. And a good defensive play by Merrick. Marcus took his legs away from him at the 47. It's third down and about six. Houston jumping out to a 14-0 lead over Oklahoma. The Outlaws have run into some tough times, and Jim Kelly, whoo, he's something. San Antonio, 7-0 over Washington. Tough little football team of San Antonio. Third and six for Tampa Bay. He's been looking for Trevelyan on third down. He goes short with a pass to Gary Anderson, and Anderson takes it inside the New Orleans 40 down to the 37. First down, Merrick finally brought him down. You get an idea just how quick Gary Anderson is, how strong he is. Marcus Merrick was right with him when he caught this pass. And then watch what happens. A little contact there. Merrick being thrown off. Merrick catches up to him. He gets on him. But Gary just keeps going. That's another four yards before Merrick brings him down. John Reeves, eight out of nine, 86 yards. On the 37. Zings one into that short intermediate zone. Ball comes loose after the catch. And it's recovered by New Orleans. Spencer Jackson had it. Hit hard, coughed it up. Woodrow Wilson recovers for the breakers. Well, that's a big break for the New Orleans team. First turnover in the ball game. The receivers have been taking hits even though they have been catching the football. But now New Orleans has a chance to get themselves on the scoreboard and make this a tie ball game.
Jackson gets the pass there, then he is just hit. Knocked away, Joe Restigress at 36 is the man that comes over and really knocks the ball loose. That will be the 17th turnover by Tampa Bay on the season. Dupree is the setback in the eye formation. Once in a while, they give it to Celine, the up man, and he's got good speed and power. But Walton wants to throw on first down, and throws incomplete, and he's lucky to get it back. Kelly Kirchbaum was the only man who got his hands on it, the linebacker who had dropped off to cover Celine coming out of the backfield. Well, Kirchbaum was sitting there, and Celine, rolling out of the backfield, should have curled that pattern right in front of Kirchbaum. If he had done that, he would have a chance to make the play. As it was, Walton kind of gave him a little pump fake, I think took a lot off this pass. Right there, it just dies into the ground. Kirchbaum can't hold on to it. Second down and 10 from the 30. Draw play to three. To the 44, a yard short of the 39, excuse me, a yard short of the first down. Marcus Dupree is like Herschel Walker in some ways, that they're both kind of skate around back there, and then all of a sudden, boom, they're gone. Yeah, and Marcus Dupree is 6'3", 240 pounds, and he's only 19 years old, but with his size, you can't tell how fast he's moving. He builds up quite a bit of speed, and before you know it, he can be by you. That time, though, Keith, he didn't really seem to come into that hole very quick. Third and one. Dupree is the setback. Jordan's up in the slot. Dupree with the ball. Out back. Gets the first down. And then some. All the way to midfield. Right now, let's go to Jim Bergamo with John Reeves, the bandit quarterback. All right, John, that was the first turnover Tampa Bay suffered in over 200 offensive plays, but let's forget that. You're moving the ball. Why are you moving so successfully? Well, we've, we've got a pretty good game plan set up. Everybody's doing their job, so uh, we've had success so far, but that turnover is not good. Why, why no huddles in the first few plays? Well, we're pretty good at that and uh, keeps the defense in a basic defense and uh, kind of gives you a little edge. All right, thanks, John. Thank you. From the 49 of Tampa Bay first down breakers. Walton goes down the sidelines, lock it, lock it, makes the catch, goes out of bounds, first down, Tampa Bay 18, first time he's gone deep. Well, they caught Warren Hanna just sleeping a little bit. Number 23, Zach Henderson comes over to make the tackle. Johnny Walton takes the ball. Now watch the way he throws the secondary off. First he fakes a pass, the uh, play, the running play. Pump takes it to the right side and comes back to the left and he finds Lockett on the sideline. He just barely stayed in. Barely stayed in, did a good job. Knew where he was on the sideline out of Nebraska. Earlier in the year, Lockett caught passes for over 200 yards in one ball game, then came back for 170 plus in the next game. Brett is knocking on the door now at the Bandits 18. This is Jordan. Penalty flag. He's up to the 15 for three. He's got a hold against the breakers. the lineup of the officials for today's ball game and the definition of Don Wilson. Number 72 on the offense. First down. Lewis Bullard, 280 pounds, and I said last time we did a New Orleans game, a guy that big ought not to be holding. <laughs> you would think he wouldn't have to. New Orleans leads in the penalty category between these two ball clubs. They've had 83 penalties for 722 yards versus 67 for 554. 547 against Tampa Bay. Back to the 28 it comes. We're at first down and 20. Walton 
Throws it in the end zone. It is incomplete. Pass intended for Charlie Smith. Charlie apparently was going to go on a corner route, then broke it off. Came back inside where he was open. And Johnny missed him. Well, what Johnny tried to do again on that play is the same thing he did on the long play to lock it. He was looking to his left, trying to get the safety to slide over, shade a little bit more to his left, then come back down the middle to Charlie Smith. The ball seemed to get away from him a little bit, sailed over Charlie's head. We don't have much wind today. It seems uh, quite calm down on the field. Second down and 20. Dupree, draw play. No, Jordan draw play. Marcus uh, out of the ball game and Buford coming in and Buford runs it down to about the 25, just inside. So New Orleans will be looking at third down and long. Now you've got Nolan Franz coming in. Nolan was the leading receiver on the club last year as the Boston Breakers. Injured, had trouble getting back into the starting lineup with the likes of Lockett, Brown, and Smith, Ross. But Franz is in now, and he's very good, particularly in the intermediate zone. Contact. Mike Butler and Dan Hurley pointing fingers at each other. Mike Butler was in the neutral zone and had come offside. No contact was made. Ball start, number 62 on the offense. There was Hurley who committed the infraction. No contact was made by Butler, and Dan Hurley stepped up to block the ball. Had the ball been snapped when Dan Hurley stood up, it would have been encroachment by the defense. As you saw there, the ball was not snapped. So it goes against the offense. Backs him up to the 30, where it's third down and 22 now to keep the ball. This is their second possession. They missed the 48-yard field goal in the first possession. Walton has time. Lock it! Oh, what a catch! Just short of the corner. It was a great catch by Lockett again. Knowing where he is, very close to the sideline, using his concentration to bring the ball in, then getting both feet inbounds. He again is working on Warren Hanna, number 20. You see him right there. He took him inside, got him turned. Hanna couldn't come out of this break quick enough to watch both steps. He just taps in. It's a good catch. He's inside the one-yard line. Not a bad pass by the older fella either. Well, if he had some doubts about the arm of Johnny Walton, so far in this ball game, that should be erased because he has put the ball on the money with the exception of two passes, one over the head of Charlie Smith and one in the ground trying to hit Saleem. Five. They're a foot away from the goal line with Dupree and Jordan lined up. It's Marcus Dupree. Easy. Touchdown. So the breakers get a big play from Walton to Lockett after having almost mistaked themselves out of scoring position. And Dupree looked like he was going to run out of the tunnel there <laughs> for a second. That turnover, the fumble by Jackson, recovery by the breakers, turns out to be a very big play as New Orleans couldn't score in its opening possession to tie up the ball game. They get that one turnover, march the length of the field. Now Tim Mazzetti comes on trying to tie up the ball game. He's going for his 65th straight point after. He's never missed one in the United States Football League. And now that I've jinxed him, He's a pretty tough kid. It's good. You've got 48 seconds to play in the first quarter. And we're all even at seven at Tampa Stadium. A big guy from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Had a little trouble getting started in his college career at Oklahoma. Muddled around a bit. Finally, it looks like he has settled himself into a professional career. And with that kind of size and that kind of speed, he might have quite a long career. Well, he's 19 years old now, and next week he'll turn 20. And I didn't start playing football until I was 22. <laughs> Alvin Bailey, Ricky Williams are the deep people, numbers 25 and 44, respectively, for Tampa Bay. A tie ball game at 7 with 48 seconds to play in the first quarter.
Birmingham, remember, is already won this weekend. They are 11 and 2. Tampa Bay starting today at 9-3 and New Orleans at 8-4. Ricky Williams returned the last one for 23 yards. This time Mazzetti hits it better. Runs Williams way back into the end zone and he'll stay there. It'll be the Bandits ball first down at their own 20 on a very pleasant afternoon in the city of Tampa, Florida. The Bandits come to the attack now. 43 seconds to go at their own 20. Reeves has thrown on first down every time, except this time he gives on a delay to Gary Anderson, who picks his way out to the 26. And the 37, the safety, Eric Johnson, the man that came back after taking a pretty good deep drop, thinking it was going to be a pass to make the tackle on Gary Anderson taking advantage of the tendency they've demonstrated so far of throwing on first down. It's not a bad play call. That man right there, Steve Spurrier, calls most of the plays. Of course, Reeves always has the option to change it. Second down and four. Stay with the ground game. And a big whack in the middle is Mike Brewington. Inside linebacker nails Gary Anderson at the 28. They are short of the first down by two yards. First quarter is over. So Tampa Bay and New Orleans all even at seven. The Bandits will have it second, third down. And about Single lone line you see there on the Tampa Bay represents a turnover that stopped a very good drive and gave the breakers an opportunity to march down the field and tie up this ball game. Third and one for the Bandits from their own 29. Greg Boone. He got it. Ball came loose. He was reaching out, Keith, with his hand. It's the ball breakers in. ball. He reached out as he was being tackled, trying to stretch for the first down. The ball was in his right hand. He pushed it over, trying to get to it. And as he did, the ball was hit and knocked loose. And number 40, Bruce Miller, comes up. And let's take a look. Comes up with the fumble recovery. Let's watch number 56, Marcus Merrick, out of Ohio State. He comes in, he's eyeing the runner. Right there, he plays off a block. You see the ball there on his shoulder. He never really did have a good grab, hold of it. And he loses it. Two turnovers now for the Tampa Bay Bandits. But this time, the ball is inside the 40-yard line on the 38. Three. Great 33 in great field position. Let's see if Walton tries to go big on the first play. Edwards with a chance to get the lead. Early going to the second quarter. That's Killeen with his first carry, and he butts head with a couple of bandits as he gets across the 30. Mike Clark and Kelly Kirchbaum give him three plus on the carry. Lockett goes out and Franz comes in at a wide receiver position for the breakers. down seven. Dupree up the middle and Marcus is close to a first down and they're going to spot him at the 22. That will be a New Orleans first down. Marcus just seemed to have lost his balance a little bit as he broke through the hole. He broke through so cleanly I think it surprised him. And he had his upper body just a little bit too far forward uh, you know, to maintain his balance. You look at the hole he gets here. He's running behind number 64, Greg Horton, number 62, Dan Hurley. Tied in is number 86, Dan Ross. And he just jumps out there, finds the opening, gets the first down. Marcus on eight carries with 49 yards. Buford Jordan is in now. Dupree is out. This is Jordan. Like I said earlier, Jordan is a good inside runner. Picks his hold very well. So he cut that one back and turned it into a seven-yard pickup down to the 15. He had number 72, Lewis uh, Ballard, out in front of him blocking Keith. But the corner came up and forced to play inside. Now, you would think he did a great job and would be successful in his attempt. But in Jordan, as you said, being a good inside runner, wasn't afraid, didn't hesitate, turned it up inside, saw where he could get a little yardage, and took it. 
It is second down, a long three. The ball is just short of the 15 of Tampa Bay. Number 65, Jerry Raymond. Apparently, uh, Johnny Walton was checking off. False start. Number 65 on the offense. So once again, New Orleans makes a mistake when they're down close. They've been flagged 86 times this season and three today. The two mistakes in scoring territory being penalties called against them have hurt them, but not as bad as the two turnovers that hurt Tampa Bay. They hand it to Buford Jordan inside, and he is horse color at about the 20 and falls ahead to the 19. Well, very often, the big guy that got in there, 77, Mike Butler. Yeah. Very often, Keith, you can tell when an offensive team is going to run a draw because the offensive line will take wider splits. Now that time, just before the New Orleans offensive line set themselves in position to block, they each on the left side to spread out a little bit more to give themselves a wider stance trying to spread out that defensive team by their alignment. That time it just didn't work. Mike Butler was right there. And it's third down and about eight yards. Dupree's back in. A lot of traffic on that side. Marcus Dupree gets across the 15 and down inside the 14 where Zach Henderson will get credit for the tackle. And that'll bring up fourth down and about two. And here comes Tim Mazzetti. And this is a more reasonable distance for Timmy. Certainly is. Thirty-one yard try. He tried one earlier, missed wide left from forty-eight. He's three out of three between the thirty and the forty. Good. Ten minutes and fifty-one seconds remaining to play in the first half. And the New Orleans Breakers have gone on top of the Tampa Bay Bandits by a score of 10 to 7. Darrell Moss Davis in his run and shoot offensive. Uh, yeah, but it didn't work at other places. <laughs> well, he's, Kelly's he's, making it work yeah, there. He's got the right guy. And all that bunch of that cubby of quail to go out and catch the passes. <laughs> Boy, can those kids run. Yeah, they just scatter all over the field, and Kelly runs, picks one out. That Johnson may set all kinds of records, too, you know. Well, he's still catching this year. He's had Richard Johnson having a heck of a year. All right. New Orleans, Mazzetti kicks off. The Breakers leading the Bandits 10-7. to The ball is short, dropped, fumbled around, and finally picked up and hammered down. It'll be Tampa Bay's ball just outside the goal line. Frank Lockett knocked Alvin Bailey back into the end zone. They'll mark the ball just short of the goal line and that's a miserable place to start Tampa Bay possession the first one they started on their 28 and looked like world beaters going 72 yards for a touchdown their next possession was the 30 they fumbled it away their own 30 and then on the next one they fumbled it away on their own 20 and resulted in 10 points for the breakers and now the bandits have it at the one this is the first time also that Frank Lockett in 1984 has been on the kickoff team and you saw <laughs> this young man who's not afraid to get down there and mix it up, sprint it down, use the size to make a great tackle. And the wind must be blowing from right to left because the wind knocked that ball right down. Well, uh, Reeves will go to the air and he whips one to Trevillian. He pitches it back. And it is Gary Anderson out of bounds. He's out of bounds at the 23. Hey. the first time the fans are terribly upset because they feel that Gary Anderson did not run out of bounds on that sideline he picks up 22 yards on the play he is awfully close I couldn't tell whether he went or not let's take a look from our end zone camera to see if we can detect it you see Trevin he catches it the old flea flicker play we saw Miami use it very successfully in the playoffs then down the sideline goes Anderson. Now let's watch his feet. He's out right, right there. Right there, he was out. He's out He twice. was out. 
Good call by the official who was right on the sideline. Caught it. His foot could not have been out by more than an inch, but that's all it needs. That's all it takes. But the bandits are off the hook a little bit. Picking up 22 yards on the play at a first down up at the 23. Anderson's out, obviously, after that long run to catch his breath, and Ricky Williams is in the backfield with Greg Boone. You said earlier, Keith, that Steve Sporty had a bag full of tricks. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> no, that was a big one there. He was right in it. I like his idea and approach to the game. Fun. Reeves back. Got a man. That's two billion. How in the world does he get open so much? There are penalty flags thrown over there. Jackson, number 88, was over on that side of the field. Looked like he threw a good block. It sprung Trevelyan for a few more yards on the sideline. Now the officials are going over it. I have no idea what that call is going to be. Holding. Holding? Bandits make a lot of mistakes here in this first half. Hold on the offense. First down. He didn't say who that time. The only person I saw there was Jackson, number 88. You see him talking to Spurrier. He's complaining to him. He says, I didn't do anything. Well, the spot now is brought back to the 27. Where the ball is put down, where it, can it be first down and six? This is Ricky Williams, one of Bobby Bowden youngsters out of Florida State. And he keeps on wiggling around and picks up a first down for Tampa Bay. Let's spend a moment with Jim Bagamo now with Johnny Walton. All right, Johnny, uh, not only is Tampa Bay giving you a couple turnovers, but uh, you said on the touchdown drive that they were cheating a little bit and giving you an opportunity on that play. Yes, I think the tendencies of our team would be to go to the two-receiver side most of the time. So they have been compensating by sending more defensive backs over there. So what we are trying to do now is try to exploit their areas of weakness, and that's going to Frank Lockett, who is on the one-receiver side. All right, thanks, Johnny. Appreciate it. From the 35, Reed shoots it down the middle. Big play, 87, tied in Marvin Harvey out of Southern Mississippi. And it's a first down. The ball marked at the New Orleans 49. Well, the Tampa Bay Bandits came into this ball game with four receivers in the top eight. Harvey comes in with 46 catches, just a simple little pattern coming over the middle against the zone, getting underneath the safeties. Reeves had time to throw, wait for him to get open before number 36, Joe Restick, could come in to make the tackle. It's got to be frustrating to be a defensive back playing Tampa Bay, doesn't it? There's Reeves throwing again. And this time he was looking for Trevelyan and Eric had gone inside, taken a chuck, and could not get back to the outside where Reeves threw the ball. That little chuck just threw him off his timing, Keith, and you saw that Reeves put the ball on the sideline where if he had not been slowed up, he might have been in position to make a good catch along the sideline. Michigan ahead of Los Angeles, 7-3 in the first quarter on Lacey's touchdown. L.A. needs to win that ball game desperately. Well, so does Michigan, for that matter. On second down and 10, Reeves to the sidelines, batted away. Charles Harbison, a healthy Charles Harbison, number 42, might have intercepted that ball, but he's got a sore leg. Well, he made a great play this time. He just got his body stretched out so he can knock that one down. And you're right, had he been healthy, able to react and come out of his break a little faster, he could have picked this one off. He was still in pretty darn good position if he had gotten his left hand up and really had gone for the catch. But all too often, the defensive back, instead of going for the catch, will just try and reach out and knock the ball down. They don't think in terms of always picking it off. Third and 10. And out of bounds for a first down at the New Orleans, short of the 35, just inside the 36. And if he'd have had another yard of real estate, it would have been six points. 
Oh, he did a great job here. It looked like man-to-man -man coverage to some degree, but you see, he gets beyond number 58, the inside back of Mike Brewington. It's just his own. Someone should have been out there, a linebacker or a cornerback at number 20, Wilson. It's the closest person there to get underneath that pass in that area of the field, but there was no one there. Had he been able to catch that pass and turn up field key, he might have still been running. And there's Jimmy Jordan, who is on the inactive roster right now, quarterback. Played a lot last year, and leaves the hurt. First down, just inside the 36 of New Orleans. Trying to set up a screen and trying to get the ball to the running back, Anderson. And it looked like the ball was slapped down. Gerald Bayless, number 60, who started at nose tackle and is playing there for New Orleans today because of Jeff Gaylord being hurt. Well, he came busting through and went right past the center, Chris Foot, or, or either one of the guards, Newton and Pitcock, trying to set up that screen. You have to slow him down just a little bit. <laughs> Second down and 10. Reeves has all day. Marcus Merrick tipped it, picked it off, running it back upfield. And Merrick is knocked out of bounds at about the 42. I was about to say that the offensive front for Tampa Bay, Kenai, Newton, Foot, Pitcock, Pike, and Harvey were giving John Reeves a weekend to throw the ball and that time he right. kept looking and looking and looking but the defensive secondary people played it very well and Merrick finally came up with it well they had a three-man rush and you see that they just stopped everyone's down on the ground or so far away from Reeves he has time to throw and he looked like he wanted to come back to number 87 Marvin Harvey well Harvey got all jammed up as Merrick tipped the ball then reached out pulled it back in so that is the third turnover now against Tampa the breakers have the ball and we still have a lead in the game and here's New Orleans now sitting on their own 42 first down leading 10 to 7 with eight minutes to play in the first half split backs now of Jordan and Celine and Walton on a play action throws to Jordan Buford's out there you don't think that's not a tough kid? Yeah, he's a tough kid. But he just spent about 20 yards worth of running inside, not picking up too many yards, trying to get away from a few people. He took that lick, though, and just kept right on motoring, and he makes it a first down at the Tampa Bay 35. All a little play action here, the Marcus Merrick, and you see Buford Jordan coming out of the backfield untouched. He gets a nice little easy pass from Johnny Walton. Now watch, he gets his yards downfield, he goes back, he loses a yard, comes back, regains it, gets it out, close to the 35-yard line. Dupree is in now, replacing Jordan. <laughs> Dupree's got the ball in traffic, two yards. Jim Bergamo now with Marcus Merrick, the man who made the interception. Dupree is hurt. It's, uh, because of the turnovers, you keep coming up with the big play. That's how you play Tampa Bay. We had four turnovers in the first quarter. We didn't capitalize on them. You know, we just want to get our offensive ball. We're getting hot today, and, you know, we're going to have to play this defense if we want to make the playoff. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Marcus Dupree is down, and uh, the way he was down, it looked like uh, about a half a ton of humanity fell on top of Dupree, and Dupree fell on top of the football. Well, he got hit and stopped, but he was still on his feet. And then, as we take a look at it here, then as he tried to just use his weight and his strength to uh, go forward, just leaning, you'll see he's hit by several other tacklers. Now right there, there's only one person there. He's trying to go forward. Right there, he's hit from behind. Number 77, Mike Butler is one of the men there. Number, 20, number 28, Doug Fatoin. The safety came in and also put a lick on him. I think it just deflated him. When you go down on that football, it will squeeze the wind out of your body. Well, the shoulder pads usually come down over the chest area, but they don't always cover the sternum. Just right where those ribs connect, and there's that little spot, the little V it forms right above the stomach. And if that football gets caught there, and you go down with your weight, and Dupree is 225, 240 pounds, then the weight of those people on top of you just squeezes all that air right out of your lungs. He picked up almost three yards, so let's call it second down, a long seven. 
Jordan comes back in. Jordan. Pretty good trap blocking up the middle for Buford Jordan. He crosses the 25 and reaches the 24, close to the 23. And that should be another first down for the breakers. And it is. Coming off the field, number 68, Fred Nordgren, holding his shoulder, Keith, his, or his right arm, as if there is a problem, some kind of pain. down from the 23. Jordan again. Bumble. Tampa's got it. Ron, si Ron Simmons, number 74. He came in from for number 68, Fred Nordgren, who went off. Holding his right shoulder as if it was injured. Mike Butler's the man that knocks it loose from a struggling view for Jordan. It's a good play. The offensive line did a great job of blocking. It's a little counter play. He took off to his left, cut back to the hole that was opened up by number 62, Dan Hurley, the right tackle. But then as he was going down, he was hit by Mike Butler and James Harrell. And it's a big turnover now for the Tampa Bay Bandits from the fumble recovery by Ron Simmons. There's Mike Butler who came to the Bandits from the Green Bay Packers. Went from one day to another. From the 17, Ricky Williams is the deep man out of the eye for Tampa Bay. And he's got it. And he picks up eight yards. Jimmy Jordan, reserve quarterback on the headset upstairs. And passing on the information from the coaches there to the head coach, Steve Spurrier, who then wigwags the information into John Reed. Second down, two. Greg Boone gets the first down, goes to the 30. When Steve Spurrier was the offensive coach up at Duke University, for the Blue Devils, Greg Boone played for it. I don't think anybody would have drafted Greg Boone. Probably wouldn't even gotten the call as a free agent. But Steve Spurrier knew what Booney could do. So he just, one of the first things he did when he was hired by John Bassett here, pick up the phone and call Durham and said, come on down here, Booney, and play for him. First down. John Reeves swings the pass out to Ricky Williams. Williams has got a problem. I think Reeves probably wanted to go downfield with it. But his secondary receiver was Williams, and they turned what appeared to be a loss into about a two-yard pickup. I think we've lost Lynn Swan's microphone here for a moment. Save your pearls of wisdom. <laughs> is on the 31 just over the 31 so it's on a second down and a short nine Reeves throwing Williams and he's just short of his first down Ben Needham got him by the coattail and held him up just short Just inches short of their first down with third coming. And number 85, John Brinkman, a tight end, comes in. 6'4", 220. He's a rookie out of Duke. Okay. Oh, I'm back. Yes. <laughs> uh, barring the first drive, which was very, very quick and prolific in terms of their passing, it seems that Tampa Bay has also gotten a little conservative in their last possessions. Here they're looking at a third and one, though. They should pick up this first down very easily. 
Well, it wasn't easy, but they got <laughs> it up. <laughs> they got it. You're right, it was not easy. Save that one big play, Keith, that they had when they were backed up the flea flicker. They have been a good deal more conservative in that opening than their opening drive. Well, they're doing a little better job covering Trevelyan because Eric was so, well, he was lonesome. Some of those passes he caught out there. Yeah. Could also be the, for the first time that Reeves has been intercepted in over 100 passes. Uh, they decided to get a little more, more, a little bit more conservative. On first down, he puts it up short to Gary Anderson. And Anderson is caught by Kyle Whittingham out of BYU, a linebacker at midfield. So there's a pickup of about uh, seven yards. Oh, Dick kind of wound up tight for this one, isn't he? We've hit two minutes now to go in the first half, and you've got a timeout on a very warm turf at Tampa Stadium with the New Orleans Breakers leading the Bandits 10-7. The Tampa Bay fans love their bandits. They've come out and supported this team very well throughout 1983 and 84. Fun to watch. A double wide now to the bottom of the picture. Sending Jackson back toward the ball. And to the other side with Reeves to throw. Look at the time. That could have been picked off. Oh, oh it is right. caught on the ricochet by Spencer Jackson. It's off the hands of the interceptor. Pavilion had it knocked away from him. And Spencer Jackson, who had come all the way across the field, caught it on the rebound. Jackson had gone in motion at the beginning of the play and was on the far side of the field. That was not, Keith, a very well-thrown pass on the part of John Reed. He gets all the time in the world. This ball is high, and there are defensive players in front of, this, of the receiver at this time. You see there. Goes up, pops up in the air. Trevian goes up again, makes a catch. It bobbles, and there is Jackson. That, Keith, is something that is also coached in terms of the receiver being in position. We'll talk about that later. First and goal on the four. This is Boone. And Bernie is knocked out of bounds at the two. Just, in, just short of the two. Well, actually, the man who should have caught that football is Garrick Chase, the cornerback, number 45. Now watch, he's the one who has the best chance to catch it. Well, this is Boone coming in the outside, just running hard. Looks like he was pinned up against the sidelines. He steps out of bounds. But Eric Trevian just out-jumped him, Keith, the second time around after tipping the ball. You teach a receiver, Keith, when the ball's in the air and it's going to another receiver, get over there and try and throw a block to, to free your own ball player. That time, Jackson, in an effort to get over and help, ends up making a big play. Second and goal from the three. This is Gary Anderson on a strength to the corner, no contest. So the Bandits are almost mistaking themselves into a big deficit at halftime, have suddenly come up with a lucky break and jumped out to a lead now of 13 to 10 with Andrew Zishin trying to make it 14. Uh, Gary Anderson out of Arkansas here. When you talk about Marcus Dupree and his speed, Gary Anderson showing that he's got more than enough to outdistance the cornerback. Big is good. A minute and 39 to play in the first half. Go back to that tip pass that was almost intercepted, almost caught, slapped around, and eventually caught by an unintended receiver. That was Jackson. We saw fade off the screen going in motion. Now watch the ball is tipped. Eric Trevian just goes up and out jumps everyone else, loses it, but Jackson is right there. Now, he had to be moving pretty quickly, Keith, to go in motion and come all the way across the field and that pass was thrown to be in position to make that catch. 
139 to play in the first half, and it's 14-10 Tampa Bay. Good is way back in the end zone and will not return Andrew Vincent's kick. So New Orleans will go from the 20 first down, and they have a minute and 39 seconds to work with. Both teams have three timeouts remaining. There's Trevelyan, and just down the bench, Spencer Jackson, involved in a big play for the Bandits. That gave them the halftime, at least at this juncture, the lead going into halftime. Tampa Bay 14-0 and 0 in ball games when they had led at halftime. I'll tell you one thing, one more comment on Eric Trevelyan and Jackson on that play. I know Eric Trevelyan is breathing a deep sigh of relief that that pass is caught. Gilbert Jordan, a yard. Ron Simmons, another ex-Seminole making the tackle for Tampa Bay. Going without a huddle, clock running. Johnny Walton's pass to the sidelines is good to Nolan Franz. And the former Greeny from Tulane is thrown out of bounds up across the 30 at the 31, and that's a first down. In the USFL now, the clock is stopped while the chains are moved on a first down in the final two minutes of each half. Nolan Franz catches that pass after having a little bit of a conversation and not too friendly with Jeff George, number 33, on the previous play. He's slippery, Franz. Wiggles around and gets open a lot. They go the other way with that little handoff to Buford Jordan. Marcus Dupree has not been seen since he had the wind knocked out of him. Now we are, understand that uh, uh, Dupree suffered a slightly sprained shoulder. And they finally get a timeout call, but they wasted about five seconds before uh, the information finally was picked up on the field. You can see Dick Corey there signaling for the timeout, but it took a while to get it transmitted through the team to the officials. You have 55 seconds to play in the first half. Sore shoulder, but I would think he'd come back. In fact, I think I might want him out there right now with that speed. I think so, and if he gets into a situation when that shoulder has to be used, I think I just dive down and protect it. This is a ball game where you got to open the door and say sick him. Yep. This game is about as big as you can get without it being a playoff game. Yep. New Orleans is in third place in their division behind this team, and they need to start closing the gap soon. Today. They go to Birmingham next week, too. So they've got the two toughies in a row. Walton's pass to the sidelines. Out of bounds. He did not get the two feet down. Marion Brown was dancing on the sidelines. And I didn't think he did, and sure enough, the man in the striped shirt is standing right there and said, son, you got to put two in bounds. My receiver coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, when I first came there, Lionel Taylor, one of the great pass receivers in the American Football League, always told us, when you're going to catch a pass, don't catch a pass backing up, because you don't know what you're backing up into. You can't see behind you. And right here, he is backing up the whole time. He is going for this pass. And he did not get two feet down. No, he didn't. The pass is incomplete. And Walton gets it off over the middle for Charlie Smith. And a first down at the Tampa Bay 37. So the veteran out of Grambling finally gets to see the football. And the clock is stopped. Charlie indicating they wanted a timeout. I don't know if they do or not. They've got two left. The clock stops automatically. And they will take a timeout. So Johnny Walton wants to go talk to Dick Corey. Uh, Charlie Smith is a receiver who doesn't have a lot of ego problems. He has some young ball players on his team doing a great job. Charlie Smith has helped them, taught them a great deal. Also how to hold, you saw that he grabbed the yeah. jersey of Warren Hanna, number 20. But he gets down in the middle of the zone defense. It was wide open, he makes a tough catch and takes a hit. But more importantly, it's first down. The ball is on the 37 yard line of the Tampa Bay Bandits. First down for New Orleans at the Tampa Bay 37 and Johnny Walton going deep with it. On the sidelines, look at that catch. 
A one-handed grab by Frank Lockett out of bounds at the eight of Tampa Bay. And who else would you expect Johnny Walton to go to in a pressure situation? Last year, against the Philadelphia Stars, back in Boston, he made a great catch to win that game. Now, earlier this year, he made a great catch against the Chicago team at halftime. Here, closing mid seconds of the first half, another great catch, his third catch for 88 yards today. That's why you call him a big play man. Ooh, a pressure receiver. For him, it's another play, another catch to be made. He does not let the circumstances weigh heavily. 35 seconds to go, first and goal from the eighth. One timeout remaining for the breakers. Walton back. Throws for Jordan and misses him. He had double coverage. He had Jeff George and Doug Bedoin, the left corner and the strong safety, had both come out and collected around view for Jordan, so Walton threw it in the seats. He also had number 20, Warren Hanna, the cornerback, close coverage to Charlie Smith, so all of his receivers were taken away. He did the wise thing, not wasting a lot of time with 31 seconds on the clock, throwing the ball out of bounds. You know what I think the next catcher will be? Spell his name R-O-O-S, R-O-S-S. -S. Ross? Ross. Dan Ross. tight end. Well, he's about as good a tight end at catching the football as playing the game today. And in a crowd, and this close crowd. to the end zone, there will be a crowd. Yep. Ross lines up wide now. Walton gives the ball to Shaleen. And Shaleen runs inside the five to the four. And the clock stops. 25 seconds to go in the first half, and it's New Orleans calling the timeout. That's their last one. 25 seconds. It is third down and goal. The ball is inside the five of Tampa Bay. And there's Captain Breaker. Comes, he comes from the Boston area every week for a football game. Pays his own way. Flies around and escapes and goes home. Okay, third down, goal to goal. If you don't score a touchdown on third down, if it's fourth down, bring in Mazzetti, go for the field goal, or do you try and put it in for the six points? No. I go for any point I can get here. I take the field goal. Take the field goal. You betcha. I agree with you. Third and goal from the five. Walton's pass. Caught. Charlie Smith hits the corner short. The official says he did not go behind the end zone. The marker that's on the lower right corner of the end zone. Now I've got to go for it because you're only inches away, right? Fourth down, and you're just uh, half a yard away. Uh, that's one. That's <laughs> those are the decisions they pay a coach for. Watch Charlie Smith. Let's see if he gets in. He looks close. Oh, he goes out. Just outside the end zone marker. Marcus Dupree is in. Guess who's going to get it? Fourth and goal from a half a yard for the lead at halftime. Dupree over the top, touchdown. And New Orleans has gone back on top. Eighth touchdown of the year for Marcus Dupree. There are only three people, four if you count a defensive back that lined up behind the defensive line on the left side of the field when that ball is snapped. Everyone else is lined up to the right of center, thinking, anticipating that they would come to the right side. Instead, they went right over the center and the left guard. Dupree got up in the air, easily into the end zone for the touchdown. It's pretty hard to stop 240 pounds falling down, you know? <laughs> Kick is good. You've got 17 seconds now to play in the first half. Rossetti has hit 66 in a row. And it's a 17-14 New Orleans lead. Well, I'll tell you one thing about Johnny Walton. He does not go down easily, does he? No, it doesn't. Matter of fact, uh, he has been in situations where he has just had to reach down inside himself, pull it out, and play football. And his wife wrote a book about never giving up, coming back, and he believes in the words that she's written. 
Dick Corey is a man who's had faith and confidence in him after having coached in Philadelphia where Johnny Walton started out his professional career with the Eagles. This is a matter of physics right here. 240 pounds goes up and forward. There's not much on the other side to stop him from coming down in the end zone. Sore shoulder and all. Yeah, a little sore shoulder and doesn't bother anybody. <laughs> oh, he's a young kid. He's only 19 years old. He can shake it off and come back. Joe Green told me, you know it's time to retire when it's Saturday night and you're just getting over the pains from last Sunday's <laughs> ball game. That's right, I was going to say. In the young days, you got out of bed and were hopping around all right and going to practice Tuesday, but when you suddenly realize it's Thursday before you put on your shoes, you know it's getting on. Heck, when you're young and you're really good, you can run around on Monday. <laughs> That's right. You did. Not long. That's a difficult ball to handle, and uh, the Bandits are going to let it go through the end zone. And they'll have a couple of snaps coming to them with 17 seconds to play in the first half. 17-14. Seesaw back and forth. Both teams making some mistakes, but uh, Tampa Bay has made the greater number of the mistakes and uh, directly leading to 10 of New Orleans' 17 points. Well, this so far in the first half has been the close contest that we have anticipated. It was supposed to have been. Certainly, New Orleans not playing as poorly as they did against Philadelphia a few weeks ago where they were set out 35-0. Reeves gives it to Anderson, fakes the reverse with Jackson, and runs out to the 25-26. And nine seconds, eight seconds, and the clock running. And I think that's the way they're going to go to the clubhouse. Tampa Bay not calling timeout. So the first half is over. The football game at Tampa Stadium with the New Orleans Breakers leading the Tampa Bay Bandits 17-14. Back with halftime activities after this commercial and the word from our local station. New Orleans will have first possession of the second half as Zenon Andresition prepares to kick it off to Tony Good. Tony is 5'10", 200, out of Southern University, a rookie. Oh, he's going to come with it. To Josh, when it looked like he might have a swinging gate on the sideline, door closed in the name of John Benson. <laughs> he came with it and they brought it to him. Looked like if he had gotten one block, Keith, that would have taken every taken the uh, bandage kick coverage into the inside. He would have been free, but the coverage got to the outside and he they hit him really hard. See right here, he'll go back. Right here, he should make the decision to stay in. Apparently, he feels he's got the blocking, he's got the room. Well, he had Tampa Bay sort of pinched in the middle of the field, too, which he might have spotted. And everybody comes to the outside. Tony is still down on the sidelines. We have a timeout for him as a result of the hit by Benson because Benson was going full speed. And he, and it was a collision. Big collision. Just took him on right in the chest. 31, Tony Good. A few years back, Keith, when they made the rule change, causing no blocking below the waist on kick or punt coverage, a lot of people became a little bit more brave. <laughs> they gained some courage knowing they wouldn't be cut around the knees and ankles, and you get some tougher hits now because of that. Yeah, and particularly, you know, a lot of people talk about the artificial turf, and I'm not a terribly big fan of it, but from the standpoint of, uh, of cosmetics, standpoint of economics, uh, the fact that you can use it under inclement conditions and uh, not tear it up, which is what happens, obviously, to a grass field, and where you have multiple use out of it, the economics dictate the use of the artificial surface. But uh, there are a lot of injuries that occur not because of, uh, of the artificial surface being hard or anything like that. It's just that they get such traction on it with the new kind of shoes that have been developed. And you get great big people like this going as fast as they go. Something's got to break. Sure. And, and yeah. even on the grass field, when you, when you get hit this openly, 
You know, there's no way he could prepare himself or protect himself from that blow. Tony finally got some wind back in him, hopped up, ran across the field, and seems to be all right. And we'll go now to the first snap of the second half of play with New Orleans leading Tampa Bay 17 to 14, and the football is sitting just outside the 21. Birmingham has already won in the Southern Division, remember, they are 11 and 2. Dupree and Shalene line up in the backfield. Dupree fakes the handoff, keeps it caught behind the line of scrimmage. That's a heck of a defensive play by James Harrell, number 50. Played five years with the Detroit Lions, came out of University of Florida. James Harrell made a, a great play here. Number 23, Zach Henderson is a safety who is being taken out by Dan Rosser just to the top of the screen. Harrell just grabs hold of Dupree and is not going to let him go anywhere. Fred McAllister came over and finished him off. Loss of a yard, second down, 11 for the breakers. Dick Corey's uh, plan was to run about 40 times and maybe throw as many as 25. He's pretty much on that schedule, too, right now. Jordan lines up now in the I-back spot. And the Buford has it. And the Bandits have him. Right at the 20. Mike Butler pinched inside and nailed him down. Buford came into that hole, and there wasn't really much of a hole for him to get into. It was bunched up on the inside, and it looked like there was going to be a hole to the right, just to the outside, but the number 77, Mike Butler, out of Kansas, just came rolling in there, thundering in there, and met Jordan head on. Now on third and ten, you figure that. McLaughlin fumbled and he never got the football back. Stuffed for it and Tampa Bay got it. When Mike McLaughlin, the center, tried to snap the ball, he lost control of it and he rolled around on the ground and Tampa Bay's Kelly Kirchbaum jumped on it. My gosh, I've seen everything, I think, in this ball game and we're just starting the second half of play. He just flat lost control of it. He was trying to snap it back to uh, uh, Johnny Walton in the shotgun, and he never did get a grip on it. Yeah, I couldn't tell, you know, just if he had to point at that football in the grass, and it got caught there, or whether he just, you know, the ball slipped out of his hand, and he couldn't get it back. In any case, it's a turnover. It's a fumble. We'll take another look at it. Right there, he did. <laughs> the ball went nowhere. It had to have slipped out of his hand, Keith because there was nothing on that ball. It didn't even roll far. And New Orleans now with that turnover, their second in the ball game, they give uh, the Bandits a glorious opportunity. First down, the ball is just outside the New Orleans 20. Reeves hands the ball to Gary Anderson. And Anderson is walloped as he comes into the center of the line. Somebody in the middle, probably Gerald Bayless, slowed him and then Merrick and Brewington belted him. Merrick was coming in from his linebacker position and hits Gary Anderson, who is coming to his right. You see here, he just gets in the hole. Anderson starts to find the same hole. He just slides right in the inside, makes a tackle. He picked up the better part of three yards down to the 18, where it is second down and seven. John. 12 and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, and uh, Mike McLaughlin sitting on the bench, still wondering what in the world happened. Tell you one thing, Michael, it wasn't good. Leaves back on second down. To the corner. And it's beyond the end zone and incomplete. Even if the man had intercepted, Bruce Miller had intercepted the ball and he was far beyond the playing surface and it would have been an incomplete pass. John Reeves was under considerable considerable pressure when he dropped back to throw that time. <laughs> Spurrier, he is an emotional fellow on the sideline. <laughs> he is in the ball game. Well, he's not that far removed from his days where he played down here in Florida for the 49ers. He did a lot of punting. Third and seven. Oh, 
penalty flag. Reeves pass caught inside the 10 by Larry Brodsky, and I think New Orleans may very well have been offside. Looked like Michael Robinson had tried to anticipate and got caught in the neutral zone. And he just couldn't get back in time. A free play for the Tampa Bay Bandits. They take advantage of it. I'm sure they will refuse the penalty and take the reception. It'll be a first and goal. Offside, number 92 on the defense. Decline, first down. First and goal, Tampa Bay at the New Orleans 8. Also, after a great closing series to get another touchdown at the end of the first half, they come out on the opening drive, cough up the football, or shall we say roll up the football. Now they're in trouble. Reeves now 18 out of 24 for 235 yards. Probably checking off here on the long call. And it's Anderson. And Gary's close to the five. Seventeen fourteen, New Orleans leading. The Tampa Bay knocking on the door now as a result of the turnover. Greg Moon coming into the lineup now for the breakers. Number 21. Ball will be spotted about the five and a half yard line. A nickel team in there. Hey John, that, that toss. That was a voice of Dick Curry we heard just briefly talking about the nickel defense. Five defensive backs. Second down and goal from the five. Reeves for Trevelyan, no. Good play by Miller. Bruce Miller is 5'9", 165. Eric Trevelyan is 6'4", 205. So John Reeves got the mismatch in size that he wanted. But Miller still made a good play. He also had number 43, Gary Anderson, underneath. Lost on the outside, but Miller does a great job of just timing it, coming from behind, getting his shoulders turned, his left arm outstretched to knock the ball down. That ball is actually closer to the six-yard line, I believe being uh, inside the six, they'll probably call it five yards officially. Third and goal. Reeves in the back of the end zone. He had Spencer Jackson wide open and missed him. Oh, he had to hurry that one, Keith. Just as he wanted, just as he was looking at uh, at Spencer Jackson coming across the back of that end zone, he had pressure from his from the defensive pass rush. He had to get rid of the football. He threw a little bit sooner than he wanted to. Rushed it. The ball went high on him. So the Bandits will try to go for the tie here on a field goal of some 23 yards by Zeman and Rizikin. And he's four out of four inside the 30 this season. And five out of five. So we're all even. New Orleans kind of dodging a bullet in the way there because Tampa Bay gets only three. So we are even at 17. 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. New Jersey is coming in two weeks. That's a short kick that hangs up and accepted by Good, who's back. And Tony comes on back up around. Guess who hits it? Vincent. <laughs> Same guy that knocked him cold earlier, knocks him down that time. Tony gets back to about the 22-yard line with 10.58 to play in the third quarter. First down from the 22. 17-17 tie, third quarter. And this is Buford Jordan. Wacko fumbles the football, and the Bandits have it. But there's a penalty flag. Let's see about the penalty. Number 75, Walter Carter, just leveled Jordan. The ball came loose, and Warren Hanna covered it. And the penalty is against New Orleans, and for the second time in a row, personal foul, illegal trap back block on number 80 on the offense, which will be declined, first down. So in successive possessions, they have turned it over at the 20, and now up at the 30. Well, Dick Curry came in here, into the stadium, wanting to control the ball, not to make the mistake, possess the football, and as you said, Two 
turnovers, two fumbles. The ball just popped right out of Buford Jordan's hand, right out of his arm, into a pile of Tampa Bay ball players. It was actually Mike Clark that hit him and knocked him back the other way. Mike Clark was the man. And on first down from the 30, Reeves going for the bundle. No good. Intended for Harvey, the tight end. Two breakers there. And uh, Woodrow Wilson being one, Eric Johnson the other. Neither can come down with it. Looks like number 52, Ray Phillips, is also back there. Get your head up. Get your head up. Let's go. Let's get ready to roll, Marcus. Get ready to go. Dick Corey keeping his ball team, ball club's attitude up. Tell him Marcus Dupree, I'm sure. <laughs> get ready to roll because you'll be back in there and we need it. Second and ten from the 30. Reeves staying with the air. Gary Anderson. Oh, almost a late hit. Marcus Merrick almost got there too late. Mike Bruinson had him down. But there is no flag, and he is down near the 22. As he was going down, he was still lunging forward, trying to pick up the extra yards. So a judgment call in the mind of the official that Merrick was just stopping him from picking hey, John, up those extra yards. Even when they're in their nickel on first down, still cover six, just six nickel, isn't it? So we can just go to their play action stuff too. Double quick game. Dick Corey trying to get organized for the next offensive series, hoping his ball club won't turn it over. There's a handoff to Greg Boone, and Boone just roaring over the right side. Number 60, Gerald Bayless, had a shot at him behind the line of scrimmage and missed him. Now, Greg Boone is the only man I'm, <laughs> that I know of, Keith, that when he hears boos, he feels good. <laughs> Fans around here, every time he carries the ball, they yell his name, and it sounds like they're booing him. It's a first down, Tampa Bay, at the New Orleans 18. Junior IU checks in to the defensive front and give the ball to Boone. The Boone is brought down by Jeff Gaylord. Gaylord is playing hurt. Didn't expect to play him a whole lot today. But he's got himself into the emotion of the moment, I guess, and he's going to ignore the hurt. He need as much pressure right now as they can possibly get. Put Gaylord back in the ball game, get Junior IU in there, who would who came from the Chicago, old Chicago franchise. Well, delay of the game on the defense. 12 men on the field. It's first down. Boy, and oh, making all kinds of mistakes now. And their timing couldn't be worse. Backed up on their own half of the field. Ball is sitting on the 13-yard line of New Orleans. First down and five. This is Gary Anderson, big hole. To the five, to the four. Joe Restick making the tackle, but a great job by number 64, Chuck Pitcock, coming across, opening up the hole for Gary Anderson. He takes the ball, looks like just a little run back to the other side. Right there was the block on number 52, Ray Phillips by Pitcock. Gary Anderson gets downfield inside, just inside the five-yard line. Double tight end alignment now with Brinkman coming in to join Harvey. It's first down and goal from the five for Tampa Bay. And Anderson to about the two. Number 43, Gary Anderson on the Gary. Merrick and Needham make the tackle for New Orleans. And the Bandits now just trying to grind it into the end zone. 7.45 to play in the third quarter, 17-17 tie.
mistakes in the ball game by the New Orleans Breakers have allowed the Tampa Bay Bandits to come back early here in the third period to take a 23-17 lead. And transition for the extra point. Out of Gillespie's hold. Is good. 7-19 to play in the third quarter. And I thought Dick Corey had a point while ago when he was walking down in front of his offensive team. They have come out now in two possessions of the second half. Turned the ball over and appeared listless. Well, they appear they've gotten flat. They've gotten a little down on themselves offensively. And you can't allow that to happen. Even with the mistakes they've made so far, it's a 24-17 ball game. They're only behind by one touchdown. They have more than enough time to come back and recapture the lead in the game. Bruce Miller has gone deep now to uh, return the kickoff. He is a right cornerback. San Antonio out over Washington 20-7 now. And this uh, Miller has returned four kickoffs so far this season. So they've had a little trouble getting the ball back up field. Tony Good, I think, probably a little sore, too. That's the way John Benson's been beating on him. Goal line for Miller. Pretty good job by Bruce. Comes back to about the 23. So now it's up to the New Orleans offensive unit to try to get something going. They've done nothing in the third quarter. Two possessions, two turnovers. Number 33, Chief Jeff Good, got up very, very slow after being in on that tackle. Jeff George, excuse me, Jeff George, and had to be helped. Well, he's still not off the field. He's shaking up. With New Orleans going to Birmingham next week, Philadelphia is going to Michigan next week. So we've got a succession of important games to be played over the next five weeks. Uh, New Orleans' uh, finishing schedule is really rough. They're playing Tampa here today. They play Birmingham at home next week. Then they have Memphis. Then New Jersey on the road. And Jacksonville and Washington. It's first and ten for the Breakers. They trail 24 to 17. Johnny Walton swings the pass out to Marcus Dupree, who is caught at the 20. Zach Henderson made the stop. Here's Jim Bergamo now of our affiliate WVUE television in New Orleans with Gary Anderson. Gary, after the problems Tampa Bay had with turnovers in the first half, you had to be happy when you saw the way New Orleans was coming out with turnovers in the second half. Most definitely. Uh, our turnovers in the first half uh, got them momentum going, got them so points on board. And we came out and got two turnovers, and uh, we still got the momentum going over here right now. Oh, thanks, Gary. Yeah. Young man from Arkansas, played for Lou Holtz. Second down, 13, loss of three yards on the screen, attempted screen. This time they run to pray around the corner. Oh boy, look at this. It takes three of them to get him at midfield. <laughs> well, you run that play, you, you look like you have him stopped behind the line of scrimmage. He was only a foot away or so, a foot away, uh, Keith, from about three people who could have made the stop. I saw O.J. Simpson take this play against Pittsburgh and run it 88 yards for a touchdown. Straight up to the line, you freeze everybody, then you break right or left, and it becomes a sprint. He's straight arms, number 20, Warren Hanna right there. He's going down the sideline. Looks like he's got some room, but number 23, Zach Henderson comes over and makes the saving tackle. But it's at midfield and a first down as Dupree is out and Jordan is in for the breakers. Okay. Jordan trying to go the other way. They had him pinned in, but then he just cuts it back when he had no place to go and picks up a couple of yards to the 48 of Tampa Bay. Number 68, Fred Nordry came around. Number 58, Alonzo Johnson. And 26, Dwayne Anderson came up from their outside position, forced everything back inside, everything being number 24, Buford Jordan, since he had the ball. 
and he had no place to run. Second down and eight. Smith and Lockett now line up at the bottom of the screen. Then Smith back the other way. Walton's pass is batted up in the air, incomplete. James Harrell blitzing linebacker. Turnovers in their first two possessions. Now, after one big play, it's by the breakers offensively, it's number 50, Harrell, James Harrell coming in, blocking Johnny Walton's pass. In case for a minute there, I thought someone from Tampa Bay would get underneath this ball, pick it off, and just walk into the end zone. It's third down and eight. is caught by Dan Ross for a first down at the Tampa Bay 34. Ross shook number 50 James Harrell as Johnny Walton the protection kind of broke down a little bit he started to scramble at number 68 Fred Nordgren on his track and right there good move by Dan Ross as he sees him scramble he just wheels inside and tries to make a move to the outside he stumbles and falls number 20 was Warren Handler came on and made the uh, tag. Johnny Walton on third down plays, five out of five. He's picked up four first down. That's clutch. Time out. Indecision. And probably in this heat, a little fatigue. Three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Walton wants to talk. Get things organized. They don't want to miss this opportunity. Trailing 24 to 17. Oklahoma game last week, there was only one punt in that ball game by Andrew Fishman of Tampa Bay. Frank Roberts has now moved over to center to do the snapping. McLaughlin might just be exhausted, having played all the game up to this point. Walton turns, hands the ball to Marcus Dupree. Oh, he got a good block on the corner from Frank Lockett, who took down Zach Henderson, and that leaves the door open for Dupree at his speed, and he goes down to the 21. Well, great job. He was called earlier for an illegal crackback block, but not this time. He gets inside. He knows the play is coming outside, and the timing is perfect. He cut him down just as Dupree was behind him. Not a second too soon or too late. If you do it too soon, knock him down. The defensive man can get back up and still make the tackle. That time, the timing was excellent. And it's a first down for the Breakers on the Tampa Bay 21. With 2.50 to go in the third quarter. David Bale is now into the wide receiver spot. He's a big tight end. Pretty good pass catcher. Walton gives that ball off to Marcus Dupree. And he's to the 18, close to the 17. Walter Carter and James Harrell on the tackle. Marcus Dupree now has gone over 100 yards on 15 carries. He's executing the ground portion of... Dick Corey's game plan extremely well. They've been able to possess the ball more in terms of time than Tampa Bay. How about the flea flicker right here? Flea flicker? That safety's really coming up. Yeah, 20 oh, play action. I go what is a second what? Hey, Steve? Yeah. Hey, 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 how about that fake seven, fake wide reverse right here, 17? They, they got the safety. Oh, we got this, this calls pass 47, six turn, 303 to Frank. Should be good because of the way they've covered the open. Well, you heard Dick Corey. He'll be looking for Frank Lockett. Johnny Walton will be looking for Frank Lockett on this play. Second down, about seven. He's got him, but he threw it too low, trapped it. 
He had Jeff George behind him and had daylight to the ball, but the pass was too low. Take a look. The official behind him makes the call in this play. Watch his hands. He gets him under the football. Looked like a pretty good catch to me, Keith. Close. Yeah. The official who was behind him actually made the call. He could not see whether that ball really touched the ground or not from his position, but he had to make a call, and he made one. It is third down and seven. Uh, yeah, it's third down and seven, not six. So we're near six. They're blitzing. Walden gets it away. David Bayer. And he can't come down with it. And the play is made by Dwayne Anderson, number 26. And they are arguing. Charlie Smith, who's been in the league a long time, knows the rules. He's arguing with the official. He felt it was an illegal play because the defensive back was not looking at the football. He was looking at number 87, David Bale, the whole way. But when David Bale lifted his hands, number 26, Dwayne Anderson, threw his hands up in the air and knocked it down. Didn't even see it. Mazzetti. Throwing the football. And the pass is incomplete. The pass intended for Nolan Fran. And so Dick Corey goes to his, the back page of his playbook. And uh, Mazzetti threw a wounded duck up there and then took a lick. That was number 26, Dwayne Anderson. What he did was they left the receiver uncovered on this, on this attempt. And it's an audible. If he sees a receiver uncovered like that, you throw it to him on the sideline. At that time, Dwayne Anderson, rookie out of the SMU, made the play. Let's go back to the previous play and look at the pressure on Johnny Walton here. It's a blitz. You see number 23 coming in from the outside, Zach Henderson. He's got pressure. Doesn't have a lot of time to get rid of the ball. He does. Number 46, Fred McAllister, also in on the play. So with a minute and 58 to play in the third quarter, the New Orleans Breakers are turned away on a gimmick play, and Tampa Bay leads it 24 to 17. Here's Greg Boone. And Boone, who has been a hard slashing runner today. And we get a little extracurricular conversation. That's Ray Phillips, who was knocked on his rear end by... He really was, wasn't he? <laughs> John, now how do you pronounce John's last name? Kenai? Kenai. Kenai. Played at the University of Miami, Florida. The crowd today is 42,592. That's the second smallest crowd for the Tampa Bay Bandits this season. This is Boone again. And Boone on second down and two is held short of the first down. Now here's Tim Mazzetti, place kicker turned uh, passer with Jim Bergamo. All right, Tim, uh, everybody wants to know what happened exactly on that play. It looked like you were confused, but I'm sure it was planned. No, it was planned, Jim. It's called, it's, it's a sandlot play. It's called the fake tee field goal. I run in without the tee, look at Nolan. Nolan does an excellent job of acting. He comes running to the sideline and says, where there's a tee? And he's the man in motion on the quarterback set in the shotgun position. I just hit him on a, on a pattern going down the line. Tampa Bay made a great play. Should have been a touchdown. Well, a little bit of the pass next time, Tim. And it, it might be. Boone goes for the first down on a handoff up the middle, and I don't think he made it. Looks like the spot is well short of it as Jeff Merrill bangs in there. Those who have been watching uh, Houston, Oklahoma, we're at Tampa Bay. I'm sorry you've had trouble with that ball game, but I'm sure they'll get things organized out there sooner or later. Here in Tampa Bay... Our score, the Bandits 24 and the New Orleans Breakers 17. Hey! New Orleans was down inside the 20 and was turned away by the Bandits' defense. Now, Tampa Bay looking at fourth and about a yard, and we're about to have our first punt in this football game. Stop her! I think. <laughs> There's no punter out there. Leading by only a touchdown against an explosive New Orleans team, Steve Spurrier. He's showing you some grit. Ooh, he is saying to his offensive team at their own 27-yard line on fourth and one, go for it. Ah, oh, that's what he was doing. He was just trying to go up there and take a long count, try to drive him offside or something like that, and watch the clock run out at the end of the third quarter. 
And we'll be back with the final period between the Breakers and the Bandits after this message and the word from our local station. Tampa Bay, 24, New Orleans, 17. First punt of the ball game is coming up now. Zenon Andrusition, he is, will kick the football toward Woodrow Wilson, number 20, and Nolan Franz, number 84. You don't want the ball to bounce here. The kick is away. It is short. It does bounce. Franz, however, steps away from one man and accepts the ball and then returns it to the New Orleans 43, where Chris Foote brings him down. So trailing by seven points. A little pressure shifts over to Johnny Walton and company as they come on the field. That's the three quarters now in our ball game here at Tampa. It's even everywhere down the line except in time of possession and points on the scoreboard to the Bandits lead, 24-17. But New Orleans with almost a full quarter to work now go first down from their own 43. And Johnny Walton back to throw. A little swing out here to Marcus Dupree. And Dupree is caught from behind by Dwayne Anderson, who has come in to play a heck of a football game for the Bandits. Tony Good, the kick returner for uh, New Orleans, has been sent off for x-rays. And now his chest, because of that lick that he no, took right. John Benson. The two licks he took. Yeah, two, two in a row. row. Almost the, exa the exact same place on his chest and the sideline. There was no gain of any consequence on it. little dump pass out to Dupree. So it's second down and ten. Dupree trying to get outside. There's no chance. They bury him back behind the line of scrimmage with Fred McAllister and Mike Clark in a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. And you got a holding coming up against New Orleans. Holding, number 65 on the offense, declined, third down. Jerry Raymond, the left guard, offensive guard. Second Looks like today he's been dinged. What make it part? Second time. Second time? Mm -hmm. Dupre losing on that play. Six yards. That takes him back under 100 net. You're looking at third down and 16. So they've got all the pass catchers in there. Out of the shotgun. Walden's pass. No good. Out of bounds. Marion Brown, number 82, was out of bounds when the ball got there. He wouldn't have a chance, and Jeff George came over, left cornerback, and really gave him a good lick for insurance. Now New Orleans will punt for the first time today. Alvin Bailey goes back, and the story on number 25, he has returned 72 consecutive punts. That means good blocking out in front and a courageous heart. Dario Casarino can't get it to turn over. It's sort of wobbling around and he fumbles the ball. New Orleans looked like they had a shot at it. And here's the customary pile up where no one seems to know for sure. Looks like an official is getting ready to point. Yes, New Orleans. New Orleans. Hanging 34-yard punt that got up in the wind. It didn't turn over at all, so it started backing up on Alvin Bailey, and that's the hardest kind of a ball in the world to track down when the thing is sliding away from you. And it just bounced out of his arm. Take a look there. He didn't call it. He had to run up for it, and the ball was sliding away from him. That's a tough catch. He's got to really get under that. Get both hands in his chest there, just slid right through his arm. That is the fourth turnover now for Tampa Bay. Ben Needham recovered the ball, and the breakers He's get got, a break. He likes the weak side action with an eight. Let's see now if Dick Corey can get his offensive team to capitalize on it. They've been pretty quiet this second half. Very quiet. Of course, their first two possessions were fumbles, and they didn't have the ball. From the 32 of Tampa. Walton 
Lawson going big for Lockett. He's got it at the nine. And there's a tough kid from Nebraska. Well, when Marcus Dupree came to the New Orleans breaker, he said the most impressive thing he saw on that team was Frank Lockett's arms. He is built very much like a linebacker at six feet, 200 pounds. He has been in that weight room quite a bit. Look at the hit that number 28, Doug Bedoyne lays on him right there. You see the whole follow just shakes, wobbles, but one thing stays steady and calm, his hands around the football, he brings it in. And it's first and goal, New Orleans, at the Tampa Bay nine. Dupree on a sweep. To the six. Wayne Anderson had got it. That was not a real strong move no, wasn't it? by Dupree to come inside. He had a blocker out in front of him, Mark, uh, Mark Shaleen, and he was blocking on Dwayne Anderson, and instead of uh, just seeing that block set up, taking it inside hard, he took a slight angle. Mark Shaleen was able to play off the blocks. One of the linemen the down there. I don't know whether it's 65 or 64 or 62, but there is a... New Orleans lineman down on the field. Time is called for him with 11 minutes and 58 seconds to play in the football game. It's Jerry Raymond out of Boston College who is shaken up on the play. Ah, it is a fine summer day <laughs> on Tampa Bay. <laughs> well, taking advantage of a little bit of fence space up in the upper level. Oklahoma, three. The ball is at the six-yard line of Tampa Bay in the possession of New Orleans. They're trying to tie it up or even perhaps go for two and go ahead. Second down and goal. Walton hands that ball to Dupree, breaks tackles and goes down close to the one. That showed me a little strength. That showed me some strength, but it didn't show me very much quickness, Keith. Nope. He had a blitz, looking right at a blitz. Walton keeps the play on. Now, Dupree has to get this ball and just take off and run past those linemen who are trying to get upfield looking for a pass. You know, he gets hit, he drives, uses the power, almost makes it in there, but with a little bit more quickness, he could have been in there clean. Ball is on the two for its third down and goal to go. This needs to be a little more aggressive. They got Wayne Cross. And he's learning. Up and over. Walton throws and almost threw an interception. Number 51, Kelly Kirchbaum, stepped in front of David Bale and almost came out of there with an interception. Oh, boy. It was a terrible pass. A bad, he almost loses the ball faking the handoff. Watch right here. He fakes it to Debris right there. He almost lost the ball. Then he comes back, there's a linebacker right in front, number 51, Kelly Kirchbaum. <laughs> a little bit better hands. Well, they're going to go for the field goal. They make it 24-20. It's a 19-yard kick by Mazzetti. He's missed one and hit one today. He's now two out of three. But that kick is good. So with 10 minutes and 44 seconds to play in the ball game, it is now 24 20. Tampa Bay still leads New Orleans. Tampa Bay coming in at 9 and 3. New Orleans coming in at 8 and 4. Birmingham has already won in the Southern Division and lead the division by 11 to 2. So they've got right now. If Tampa Bay can hold on and win, they'll have a one-game lead over the Bandits. That ball is picked up by uh, Ricky Williams, and he keeps battling along. And finally gets it back up across the 25. Here's Johnny Walton now with Jim Bergamo. Johnny, uh, what happened on that play? There seemed to be some confusion on the play call. What exactly happened? Well, I don't know. I was just waiting for a play to be called. I was in the huddle waiting. Uh, all I can do is execute. And uh, we have 10 minutes to go. And, and you know, we'll get some more points on the board. With some more points, we'll win the football game. If the defense take a big stand now, then the offense do what we have to do. We'll, we'll win the football game. All right, thanks, John. Yeah. the 27. The Bandits go to work. They'd love just to run that clock around now as they go to the passing game on first down, and that's that bang-bang play with Trevelyan, the receiver. And Eric is beyond the marker and picks up a first down for the Bandits. Eric Trevelyan has been open all day. Really has. On that short, that 10 to 15-yard pass by the little hook. 
That's his seventh catch of the day for 80 yards. Well, Woodrow Wilson's not going to cover him, is he? He's 5'9", 175 pounds, and Eric is 6'4", 205, and it's just tough for number 20 to get up there with him. Yeah, he hasn't made it too much of a jumping contest. He's just wide open. Run the ball, Gary Anderson. Ray Phillips gets him. Number 52 runs him down. Grabs him around the ankles, try to keep him up, let him stay up to take a little more punishment to slow him down. Uh, give you some idea of the warm day, but it's, it's not terribly uncomfortable at all. It's quite nice. Uh, modern technology Air conditioning on the sideline. I'm sitting up here in the, in the shade. I'm not down there bumping heads. And that sweat box called the uniform. 44-yard line. Second down and six. Reeves, short, good to Harvey. And Harvey is decked two yards short of his first down. Mike Brewington did a good job stopping him short. The gunslingers continue to roll. Looks like they've got that one in hand, doesn't it? Yes, it does. A lot of talk around, as we saw on the pregame show, that Howard Schnellenberger will probably make a decision over the next few days mm -hmm. whether or not he will become the coach of that Washington franchise that everybody figures is going to be in the Orange Bowl next year. Well, I guess it's not yet a fait accompli. The franchise has been sold to Woody Whitehead. Third down and two, and they go for it on the ground with Anderson. I think the last effort may have I, done it. I think he came up short, Keith. They're marking it just right on, the, on the bandit side of the 50. They're short. And they will they will be short. All right, what do you do? You're going to punt on fourth down. Do you try to pick up that foot and depends keep on, the ball? Depends on whether you think your defense can hold it. So if I were Steve Spurrier, I'd go for it. <laughs> Simple as that. Take yeah. a look at Gary In the first half now, Tampa Bay's offense was good for 276 yards, 20. In the second half, they picked up 89. They're going. Fourth and a foot. He's got it. Just barely. Number 92, Mike Robinson, burled underneath that offensive line. He was able to get him, get Anderson around his ankles and trip him up, but just the length of his body was good enough to go over the 50-yard line, up to the 49 for the first down. Jeff Gaylord is hurting down on the field, a nose tackle for New Orleans. Anderson has totaled 118 yards now, 45 running and 73 as a receiver. Gaylord's hurt. He is in great pain. You see him there. Up well, he body was, for a while, jolting around yeah. under the pain. He was playing hurt uh, and wouldn't expect to see a whole lot of him. He's, He's playing in the, in the middle tackle. there. Playing right there in the middle. That's Chris Foote who's going against. He's being driven back there. See that oh, knee? Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Oh. It's about five people falling on an extended look, knee. Yeah, it looked like that left leg just got extended straight out behind him. And a whole pile of people. Three or four people right on top of it. So it's got to be at least a hyperextension of the left knee. Maybe worse. Eight minutes to play in the football game. Crowd of 42-5-92, enjoying themselves. Their team is sitting on a 24-20 lead. Trying to keep it close to the vest and keep the clock running. Reverse it with Gary Anderson. And he reaches the 44 for four yards. Marcus Merrick on the tackle. And they're working on Gaylord. Oh, I hate to see that. Mm. The knees are just, there's just not much you can do with a knee. There's, there's no muscle to build around the thing. No, well, it's such a lost feeling to, to be in there in the middle of the line, blocking, you feel your legs slipping away underneath you, and you just feel the pressure building up on it, and you can't pull it back. Second down about six. John 
threes. Throws the short pattern good to Larry Brodsky. And Brodsky looked like he got just beyond the marker for a first down. Larry Brodsky was a little bit upset. Took the ball, threw it back at Marcus Merrick. It is a first down for Tampa Bay, and for those of you who have been watching the Houston-Oklahoma game, that segment of the country, we return you now to Jim Lampley at our studios in New York. And the rest of us will stay right here as Tampa Bay is holding on to the football at six and a half minutes to play and trying to keep control of it. New Orleans has two timeouts remaining. They called one early back in the third quarter, remember. Penalty flags. Where's the clock? That's the delay of the game. Number seven on the offense. First down. Automatically goes on the quarterback. Then the 30-second clock expires, and you haven't clicked off another play. It's a five-yard penalty. Of course, that is the only, only the second penalty for the Tampa Bay Bandits so far in the ball game, Chief. Yeah, turnover's been the biggest enemy of both teams, really. Though New Orleans in the first half didn't mistake themselves at the wrong time a couple of times, but got off the hook with big plays. First and 15. The ball comes back to the 42. Gary Anderson has some room. He is a slippery guy, isn't he? Very slippery, but he got a real big block from Marvin Harvey, the tight end, number 87. When he came back to block on number 77, Junior Ayu, who had come in to help on the pass rush. You see 77, Ayu right there, now he's chasing. What you see is 87 comes right there. Hits Ayu, takes him out. Pursuit can't follow Gary Anderson. They're being blocked. He outruns them. See Harvey, number 87, leading pass receiver on this team. He's just looking. Coming back and he finds someone. Greg Boone is in now. Anderson out on second down and six. This is Boone. Right ahead for the first down. Right up the middle. The offensive line. The left guard, Matt Newton, the center, Chris Foote. The right guard, Chuck Pitcock, who's replacing the injured Fred Dean. He just takes one little step to the outside to set up the play, then up the middle behind good blocking, and then the rest is Boone's power. There's Pitcock. I was talking to a couple of players from the Bandits before the game. They said, Pitcock, well, he's a pretty rough ball player when you get in the trenches. Tampa Bay now has been controlling the football for six consecutive minutes. They've held the ball for six minutes. And with the first down, they're going to hold it some more as Greg Boone runs over people and gets inside the 15 to the 14 and it's another Tampa Bay first down. <laughs> Eric Johnson lost his helmet. Now you take a little decal, you stick it up by your lock <laughs> and you say as a fullback, I knocked another one off. Those two for the last two first downs were big. They stick it in the end zone here. Lock running at four minutes. Using up quite a bit of time on this drive team. They kept the ball consistently on the ground. Yep. Taking away. Back up. Boone struggles for two to about the 12. Charles Harbison, a strong safety up for the hit. It's at this point, you now have to say that what New Orleans defensive team has to do has stopped them and not give up more than a field goal. They are already in field goal position. If they give up a touchdown and the extra point, they'll be behind by by uh, 11 points. It's over. And it's real tough for them to come back it's to over. get 11 points with what will, what will be less than three minutes in the ball game. If they can hold them to a field goal, we know that the New Orleans breakers with Frank Lockett and Johnny Walton have great comeback potential. And John Reeves steps away, having looked at the defense and the people and the uh, alignment he'd called. 
And he wants to talk. So timeout, Tampa Bay, 3-0-3 to play in the game. Down to the 11. He got one yard out of that effort. And it was a fair to Midland effort. One of our timeouts. Keith, get one of our timeouts before. Oh, he's only got two left, though. Ah, uh, he wasn't talking to you, yeah. was he, Keith? I hope not. <laughs> I can't help him. <laughs> well, would you tell him to use the timeout now? <laughs> Tampa Bay has been sitting on the ball now for eight minutes. Third down, seven from the 11. Reeves to throw, pass is caught, Harvey. Harvey is cut down at the three. Bay's inbound. And that is a first down for Tampa Bay. Five seconds to go to the two minute warning in the final period of this ball game. Well, that might have been the hammer that broke the nail, or whatever you want to call it, because that now puts Tampa Bay in position to gobble up some more time, keep it on the ground, and possibly score a touchdown. Harvey has been doing a good job this afternoon, making some key catches to keep drives alive, some good blocking. Here he comes up with another catch, maybe his biggest catch of the afternoon, to give his team a first down inside the five, Two minutes to play in the ball game. The Bandits lead it, 24 to 20. And they look like they're going to score again. Next Sunday, we'll have a choice of two games. Check your local listing for the game in your area. Philadelphia at Michigan and Birmingham at New Orleans. Gary Anderson today has broken the Tampa Bay rushing for the season. He is now past 695 yards. The old record was 694 by Greg Boone. It's first down and goal to go from the three for the Tampa Bay Bandits. And Anderson gets a yard. Block is running now. New Orleans with two timeouts. Although most of the yards have come through the air this afternoon, the offense of Tampa Bay. I expect now as New Orleans calls a timeout. Make another one on third down, Doug. That they will do nothing more than run the football to try and use up those few precious moments in an effort to seal victory for their team. 147 to play. It's second down and goal from the two. touchdown of the day. Gary Anderson, who came in from Arkansas in the middle of the 1983 season, a full year in 1984. He has been a workhorse. Just a consistency for this, for this team. Boone giving him a great block, his great second effort, getting across the goal line for this touchdown. And musician in, trying for the extra point. This is Pretty good size extra point, and he hits it. So at 1.43 to play in the football game, it's now an 11-point lead, 31-20, Tampa Bay. So the New Orleans Breakers, who were down here knocking on the door and had to go for a field goal instead of getting the touchdown, the tie, let's listen now to Dick Corey. for a starting field was uh, 201-2 set in Texas but this end of field is going to be faster 
Anthony Steele fumbles the kickoff, and now Anthony looks for a little daylight, and he gets out of it all right. He gets back to about the 27. But this is a real example of pounding it out, isn't it? Well, it's uh, showing the other side of a prolific passing attack to come in, to have a ball game under control, or at least having the lead in that ball game, then slowing the pace down 15 plays, but more importantly, nine minutes and one second to score a touchdown. Well, that really takes the ball game away from your opponent. They can't do anything, and that uh, just reduces their opportunities of being able to come back. A minute and 36 seconds on the clock. New Orleans with one timeout remaining, and they're going to go out of the shotgun. You heard uh, Dick Corey say that, and Johnny Walton this half, three out of nine for only 34 yards. Dumps this one off over there to Buford Jordan. Jordan gets some help, uh, but does not get a first down. He gets up across the 35 where Alonzo Johnson out of Florida A&M brings him down, and we've got an expression of uh, frustration on the field, and there's a penalty flag. Well, that's one way to get the clock stopped, I guess. Have a fight. <laughs> Jerry Raymond, who was called for holding twice in the ball game, or two penalties, I think one was holding and one was offside. Right now, Johnny Walton ought to get his offensive team huddled up. He should. At least talk to them, get them uh, the next play he wants to call. So no matter what the officials decide to do, his offensive team is set and ready to execute. They do not have a first down, so whatever they do, the clock will, all, will start immediately after they put the football down. Here's Don Wilson. The personal foul, 25 on the offense. Personal foul on the defense. He called, he said 25, didn't he? Shaleen, huh? He said 25, Mark Shaleen, the fullback. He wouldn't want to get in a scuffle with Mark, and he is a real tough customer. 35 yard line. Second down, two. Give it a view for Jordan. He's got the first down, and more as he runs to the 48 of New Orleans, and the clock stops on the movement of the change. Now New Orleans has got to go without a huddle. Once the change is set, the clock will start. 113 to play in the game. Walton going to the sideline. It is intercepted, but he was out of bounds. Warren Hanna comes down with it, but Frank Lockett, the intended receiver, was right on the chalk, and when Hanna went up to get it, he was out of bounds. Well, I mentioned earlier that this team has the ability to come back from behind. This looks like the play we saw at the end of the first half when New Orleans was playing Chicago, and they went for it. They didn't score, but Frank Lockett came up with a big play on the sideline. That time, Hannah got in front of him, picked it off, but he was out of bounds. Second down and 10 from the 48 of New Orleans. 1-0-3 to play in the game. This is Marion Brown stepping out of bounds on the Tampa Bay side of the field at the 48, picked up a four on the play. Now, if the game here does not have some kind of miraculous finish, here's the way the thing will look in the Eastern Conference. Philadelphia and New Jersey, 1-2 in that uh, Atlantic division. Birmingham, 11-2, and Tampa Bay going to... Uh, 10-3, uh, and three. Tampa Bay and Birmingham finish the season playing each other. And New Jersey is coming down here to Tampa Bay in two weeks while New Orleans has to take on Birmingham next week at the Superdome. Walton's pass drilled to Brown. And he's got a first down at the 40. And the clock stops at 51 seconds to play in the game. Now the defense has everybody back alert looking for the deep pass, forcing Johnny Walton to go underneath. He's using up. Quite a bit of time, most of the time he has. Coming into this weekend to play, the uh, Southern Division was the only one over 500. That pass is caught for another first down as the Tampa Bay people now are playing center field. They're giving them the short stuff. And the pass caught by Frank Lockett will give uh, New Orleans a first down at the Tampa Bay 24. 41 seconds to play. As they move closer to the end zone, they're compressing the field so they won't be as far away. Walton fumbles the snap, 
and finally has to fall on it to keep it back around the 27. Ball didn't really get back to it. Time out! Over here! Right here! So there's a timeout call by uh, New Orleans. That's their last one, and Walton doesn't even know that uh, they've affected a timeout. That's the last one. They have no more remaining. This is their last chance to talk with 23 seconds, and I don't think Tampa Bay really cares if they do score a touchdown here. How is your brigade today, Mr. Swan? <laughs> Ball is at the 27 of Tampa Bay. Lockett today has caught five passes for 125 yards. Five of those were all first downs. All five were first downs. I'm sure he wouldn't mind catching a six and another touchdown, but he'd give up all those catches to have his team out in front. Tough young man of Nebraska. 24-7 team, Michigan, they kicked on side, recovered the football, and they have it with about a minute or so to play in the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Michigan trying to win to stay at, uh, go eight and five, and stay tied with the Houston Gamblers. And of course, Arizona beat Denver, and uh, Los Angeles has to win in order to stay even with Arizona in the West. All right, the ball gets away from Johnny Walton again. Lobs it into the end zone and beyond the end zone, incomplete. What about ineligible receivers downfield on that one? Uh, he was pretty close to being over the line of scrimmage, too. Actually, he could have run for 15 yards. Yeah, but he knew he couldn't have gotten into the end zone. Uh, it had been a long run for Johnny Walton with the entire secondary in front of him. Well, once he crossed the line of scrimmage, he would have converged quickly on him. It is third down and about 13. Back on the 27 with 12 seconds to play. Uh-oh. Rager started too soon. They go ahead and run out the play. The pass is incomplete. Dan Ross was one of those who broke on the outside. I think Frank Lockett might have been the other. Noisy crowd, hard to hear when you're stuck way out there. You've really got to concentrate and control yourself. I have to look down the line of scrimmage at the ball. And when the ball is snapped, you see there, Ross can look inside, Lockett can both look inside. When the ball is snapped, then they would take off if they can't hear. It's much more of a problem inside an enclosed structure like the Superdome that the Saints, I mean, that the uh, Breakers play in. So it should be something that they're very accustomed to. Seven seconds to play in the game. This is probably the last minute. Frank Roberts is at center right now, a guard. There's the pass. It's good to Marion Brown. Brown trying to get to the sidelines and steps out of bounds, but it's too late. The ball game is over. And the Tampa Bay Bandits have just won their 10th against three losses with the final score of 31 to 20. The Breakers had their chance, but bad luck bit them. Tampa Bay had bad luck and mistakes in the first half. Got a big break in the second half and uh, came on to win the football game 31 to 20. And this is a football team that I think is going to be rough customer in the playoffs, don't you? Well, they, I think they're going to be very tough because now Jerry Anderson playing a full season and Boone, a great running attack to go with that passing attack of theirs. Uh, they're going to be formidable. Once again, final score, 31-20 Tampa Bay.